we're going to move to the next <laughs> yeah. story here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is the biggest story this week. Certainly one that is making a lot of waves, and that is the issues around TikTok, whether or not it will be banned, the hearing with the CEO of TikTok in front of Congress, uh, everything related to how technology and the new Cold War intersecting, and we are very happy to be joined as we continue the show by Amanda Yee, an editor for liberationnews.org and host of Radio Free Amanda. Amanda, thanks so much for being back with us. Hey, thank you for having me. It's good to be back. Well, it's an honor to have you here with us. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people saw at least some of this hearing in front of Congress about TikTok. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of people mocking it, but a very serious hearing in many ways. Uh, I mean, you know, if, capsule view, maybe I guess my first question for you, Amanda, is what do you make of this hearing? I mean, what's the real purpose of it? I mean, obviously, they weren't really getting yeah. to the root of anything real technologically. Yeah, I mean, I found it to be just racist political theater, like uh, a McCarthyite spectacle overall. It was just five and a half hours of CEO of TikTok, Shaoji Chu, being asked the same questions over and over again, uh, where the Congress people kept trying to link Chu, who was born, uh, raised, and currently lives in Singapore, to the Communist Party of China. And at one point, a congresswoman even asked Chu if he believed the Chinese government was persecuting the Uyghur population, uh, which seemed um, entirely inappropriate uh, to ask during the hearing in which he was there to talk about his app TikTok, right? So these people clearly are not concerned uh, about data privacy as they claim. Um, if they were, they would have been able to at least demonstrate some fundamental understanding of how social media algorithms or even basic technology worked, right? At one point during the hearing, one congressman even asked Chu if TikTok could access the home Wi-Fi, and it didn't really, he didn't really seem to understand how home Wi-Fi networks worked, right? <laughs> so crazy. Um, so obviously, this is not about the alleged concerns over the Chinese government being able to access U.S. user data through TikTok. Um, what this is about is U.S. capitalism and the dominance of Silicon Valley over the tech industry. The fundamental issue here is that ByteDance, uh, a Beijing-based company, has built the most popular and most frequently downloaded app worldwide, and it boasts 150 million users in the U.S. alone. And it, because of that, it's rapidly pulling all this digital advertising away from its U.S. competitors, and its U.S. competitors in Silicon Valley just are unable to compete. And this explains why the U.S. is moving to either force the sale of TikTok to a U.S. company or ban it entirely, which would drive TikTok's users to its competitors like Meta, Instagram Reels, which is also owned by Meta, Snapchat, or YouTube Shorts. Um, either way, Silicon Valley stands to benefit. Um, and even if they don't end up banning TikTok, the spectacle of last year of last week's congressional hearings and the scaremongering over uh, this kind of Chinese surveillance uh, was itself enough to drive up stocks for Meta. So like the sanctioning of Chinese tech giant Huawei, this is part of the U.S. digital containment strategy of China, um, where it's trying to block its access to key markets like the U.S. Um, the U.S. is pressuring its allies to make moves to ban TikTok, just like they pressured them to ban Huawei. And this is a strategy which is trying to thwart China's rise within tech, within tech, tech, tech sector um, and to make sure China remains in its place as this kind of semi-peripheral uh, manufacturing hub um, for the benefit of Western capitalists. And for decades, China to the US was a source of cheap labor and super profits. And there's always been this kind of racist idea that China's place in the global supply chain was that of the world's factory, um, which is a producer of cheap consumer goods, but never a source of technological innovation. But now that China has managed to develop a competitive tech industry and some degree of economic sovereignty, the U.S. is trying to eliminate what it sees as, as economic competition. And... So what this really is, is a key front in the new Cold War, in which the U.S. tech war against China is driven in large part by Silicon Valley, who just cannot compete with Chinese tech. Yeah, it's amazing. The only way they can win in their so-called free market is to 
cheat. <laughs> um, and I mean, you actually pointed out, uh, I saw uh, about the fact that Meta itself has been deeply involved in uh, funding a lot of the people who were pushing the, this line of questioning, likely also feeding um, the talking points to a lot of these legislators, uh, which isn't at all surprising because obviously TikTok isn't lobbying Congress. Facebook does, and Facebook is completely yeah. in bed with the U.S. national security state. But I think, you know, there's this legislation. Um, I'm not really familiar with all the details of it, but it's called the Restrict Act uh, mm -hmm. that people have been talking about as being very concerning in terms of were it to pass, what it authorizes the U.S. government to do with regard to media under the guise of, you know, fighting the Chinese Communist Party, stealing our data through TikTok. Can you talk a little bit about the Restrict Act and why people should be concerned about this? Mm -hmm. So there have actually been two bills introduced which would ban TikTok. The first is called the Data Act, which doesn't really seem likely to pass. And the other one is what you're talking about. Um, it's called the Restrict Act, and it was introduced in the Senate. And it does seem to have a lot of bipartisan momentum behind it, and it does seem likely to pass. So under the Restrict Act, uh, the Department of Commerce would identify information and communications technology pro products that a foreign adversary has like any kind of interest in or that poses what they consider an unacceptable risk to national security. Um, and they classify foreign adversaries in the bill as China, of course, Russia, Iran, Venezuela, or Cuba. But there's also a clause uh, later in the bill that allows the Department of Commerce to decide who is a foreign adversary at any time at their discretion. So that means that any other country could be designated a foreign adversary at a later time. So what this bill means is that it would ban any kind of ownership of any widely used um, information and communications technologies within the U.S. market um, by these adversaries of the U.S. Now, Senator Mark Warner, who wrote and sponsored the bill, he has come out and said that this bill would only target corporations and not private individuals. But um, there's still a lot of concern because digital experts worry that the language around this bill, um, that it's so broad and so open to interpretation that it would dangerously expand the national security state. Like some of the clauses in this bill could be interpreted in such a way to go after individuals who attempt to evade or help others to evade these restrictions on foreign owned information and communications technologies um, and hit them with these really draconian penalties. And because this bill is so ambiguous, it could be interpreted to go after people uh, who, for instance, use the Chinese app WeChat, uh, for example. It could be interpreted to criminalize people who use a VPN uh, for which they could be hit with 20 years in jail or a $1 million fine. So again, the issue is not one of national security or data privacy. It's one of blocking Chinese technology from accessing the key US market. Um, data privacy here is instead being weaponized to take down a Chinese competitor that threatens silicon dominance over the tech industry. Because data privacy concerns are in no way unique to TikTok, right? If politicians were really concerned about data privacy, they would actually endorse and enhance privacy legislation to protect consumers and regulate the industry, which they just refuse to do. And they don't do that because Silicon Valley represents such a strong political force in Washington. Um, Silicon Valley had, has spent over $70 million in lobbying in 2021 alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means they've surpassed major industries like pharmaceuticals, oil, and gas sectors. Wow. Um, and so the issue of TikTok for the U.S. government is not one of the Chinese of the Chinese government obtaining U.S. user data. The issue is that the government itself wants access to that data and cannot make ByteDance uh, hand it over to them like they can with U.S. tech companies like Facebook. Um, and these tech companies, they often work in tandem with agencies like the CIA or the NSA, as we know, or oftentimes they comply with the Justice Department uh, when they're requested to release information. 
Yeah, well, it's an interesting – that in and of itself is an interesting question. I mean that was certainly the TikTok CEO, sort of his main point is that, you know, they comply with whatever laws that are out there. And, and so certainly the United States, you know, could revisit its own law. I mean that was one of the things is what they show kids. Uh, I know it was one of the big mm -hmm. topics of discussion and the difference between China and America in terms of what you can show kids, period, on the internet and how that speaks to the deeper underlying issue. And I mean I think, you know, TikTok obviously has – offered up their own plan um, for how they would address the issue of data. So it felt sort of surreal watching the 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 hearing because it was it was like, well, wait a second, they're actually addressing what you said, and yet somehow that's just being totally ignored for essentially clickbait, it seemed, um, as you're saying. It just feels like part of this broader panic reality that we're seeing these stories. I mean, the spy balloon, the, the issue of people buying land in different states or whatever, like South Dakota, something like that, the ban on land buying in Texas. I mean, it just seems like every there's so many attempts to use different little incidents like this to create this mass panic amongst Americans that somehow they are deeply, deeply in threat from China. Yeah, and what you raised earlier is a really interesting point in that, um, so there's been a lot of scaremongering around the issue of data privacy and US user data in the hands of the Chinese government. But there's also been uh, a lot of scaremongering around um, you know, uh, TikTok as a tool of what they call CPC mind control. Mm -hmm. That TikTok is part of this cognitive warfare strategy of the Chinese government where they use the algorithm to influence Americans' emotions and ways of thinking, um, essentially brainwashing. And of course, this isn't uh, like new propaganda. This is recycled propaganda from the last Cold War in which the U.S. again accused its enemies like the Soviet Union and China of brainwashing American citizens to be, um, you know, more acceptive, uh, ex like more able to accept communism and communist ideas. Um, the Democratic chair of the Senate Intelligence Com Committee, Mark Warner, um, you know, a few months ago, he accused China of controlling the algorithms that determine what you see on TikTok. And he noted that TikTok's sister app in China, which is called Douyin, um, how on that app, Chinese kids are seeing science and engineering videos. Uh, and, in, and that app is used as an educational tool in China, whereas the content that TikTok shows its users in the US is essentially junk. And during the hearings, this was another point that kept being raised again and again. Like Kathy McMorris Rogers accused TikTok's algorithm of promoting suicide, drug use, self-harm, um, and eating disorders among children, while noting that China bans this type of content on Douyin. And Dan Crenshaw, while questioning uh, the CEO of TikTok, he said that if the CPC wanted to, they could, um, you know, use this U.S. user data to influence narratives and trends and create misinformation campaign, encourage self-destructive behavior uh, among teenagers, and also purposely allow drug cartels to communicate freely in human and drug trafficking. Like, that was the point that he raised. And, um, you know, Something. first of all, TikTok and, it's, and Doyen, they show different kinds of videos because uh, unlike the U.S., China bothers to regulate the content that children consume on social media, um, a move which U.S. politicians often decry as authoritarian overreach. And once again, the issue is not of like individual apps themselves. It's one of lack of government regulation at the behest of Silicon Valley tech companies, the blame of which the U.S. government is shifting onto the Chinese government. Right. I mean, yeah, the, the, the idea that, yeah, the, the, maybe the Chinese Communist Party is trying to hypnotize our children by making Addison Rae dance videos on TikTok, 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 TikTok go viral is so insane. But the other thing too here is there's such a, there's already such a huge backlash. 150 million Americans apparently use TikTok. That's a huge number, right? It's such a mm -hmm. popular app. And you're right, a lot of the stuff on TikTok is junk because like on all social media in America, it's all junk because it's all about corporate advertising, eh, which ends up just promoting junk. But at the same time, a lot of people make money using TikTok and branding on TikTok. And obviously they don't have huge companies to be able to lobby Congress, but it does seem like if Congress really does something about this, I mean, I feel like in a place like America, you might actually see protests. TikTok is really popular. People spend hours on it a day. 
People make content yeah. for TikTok and their careers depend on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious your thoughts on, on what kind of backlash there might be because, I mean, I feel like it's like, you know, Instagram tried to create reels to compete with TikTok and it didn't work because TikTok is just so popular. Right, right. Um, there has been a lot of backlash. There were even protests uh, in front of the congressional hearings oh, last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think um, a lot of the social media apps, they really underestimate like the popularity of TikTok and, you know, like how popular it is among Gen Z. Rania, a few minutes ago, you mentioned um, that uh, Meta has been, uh, you know, fanning a lot of these allegations, the scaremongering around TikTok. And I just wanted to revisit it because it is really an important point because Meta has been uh, a key component in this war against TikTok. Um, uh, last year, the Washington Post they ran a story where um, you know they uncovered these internal emails uh, where Facebook had hired a consulting firm uh, to, uh, to undermine Facebook's competition and present mm -hmm. uh, TikTok as a danger to American children wow. and society. And so this consulting firm was instructed to deflect to uh, deflect. Uh, a lot of Facebook's own privacy issues on TikTok, and it was instructed to publicize stories in media about dangerous teen trends to pressure local legislators to act against TikTok. Um, so what the, uh, what the firm would do was that they would contact local news outlets and get them to run stories about dangerous teen trends, dangerous teen trends um, that had supposedly gone viral on TikTok, but actually a lot of them had originated on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, they would like write op-eds and letters to the editor in local newspapers posing as concerned parents oh. about how TikTok was a danger to their children and society at large, and that they were worried about the Chinese government having access to their children's user data. So this campaign was waged to enlist media and politicians to help, to help take down Facebook's biggest competitor. So a lot of this has been the doing of Meta, who has fanned the allegations of these supposed dangers of TikTok. That's where a lot of this um, scaremongering kind of originates. And also, of course, Meta is a huge company and they have a lot of money to spend uh, on lobbying Congress. Like in 2020 al alone, they spent a record $20 million lo lobbying Congress. And Silicon Valley overall is just like a huge political force in Congress um, in a way that, you know, ByteDance, TikTok, they do a little bit of lo lobbying, but they don't necessarily have nearly as much money as these Silicon Tech Valley companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And, you know, people don't want to seem associated with them because then they say, oh, you're just a Chinese right. chill outside of a handful of people. Well, Amanda, as always, really appreciate you. I should mention, I should have mentioned at the outset that you have a lot of this and more on paper at liberationnews.org. TikTok on trial, the latest front in the U.S. tech war in China by you, Amanda Yee, an editor of Liberation News, the host of the excellent Radio Free Amanda, which hopefully everyone is subscribed to and checking out. As always, we really, really are grateful to you for making some of your time, giving us some of your time here on the Freedom Side. Thanks for having me. Of course.